my name is Kristen Pullen, and I'm 18 years old, and I just graduated from Providence High School in May of 2006. And this past October of 06, I was diagnosed with AML leukemia, and I was attending the University of Bellarmine, but I had to withdraw to undergo treatment. And now I have five rounds of chemo to go through, and I am in round four of five. Um, leukemia is a blood disorder, and it is where your bone marrow produces abnormal white blood cells, and they pretty much just take over your body. And I had the subtype AML, which is usually found in older people. But at my age, it is best that I would have AML and ALL, the other subtype, is usually found in young children. There are three different risks. You can be in high risk, intermediate risk, or low risk of the leukemia coming back. Usually people that are in high risk will get a bone marrow transplant. In a bone marrow transplant, what you would do is you would have two rounds of chemotherapy and then you would go through with the transplant. People in low risk usually do not get a transplant and they would just go through the five rounds of chemotherapy. And people in intermediate risk, as I am, are the ones that have a choice to make. Usually if you have a matched sibling, a lot of times people will go on and get the bone marrow transplant, but my brother was not a match, so I am not going to get it. So I'm just going to go through the five rounds of chemotherapy. For me, a usual hospital visit consists of First, they will give me the high doses of chemotherapy. Sometimes it's five days, sometimes it's as long as nine days. And what that does is that completely wipes out your white blood cells, which causes your ANC to go down. And that is good because you want to wipe out those bad white blood cells. A normal ANC is about 5,000 and usually it'll cause yours or the patients to go down to, sometimes it hits zero, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five, go down far enough for them to say, okay, you know, we've done the damage. And then what you'll do is, you'll, it's a recovery process where you sit and you wait for your counts to go back up. And that's where I am right now. I was hoping to go home last Monday, because last Monday would have been three weeks but my counts were only like three then. And so you have this thing called ANC, and ANC is your neutrophils and your white blood cells. And you have to wait until those numbers get at least 500 before you can go home. And today mine are at six. So that is why they have this shot called the Neupogen shot, which is actually they call it an artificial, like, razor of your white blood cells and your neutrophils. And it helps your ANC build and build so you can go home. And hopefully they, the doctors, figure by that time that your body, your bone marrow, will be able to make their own white blood cells, healthy ones. And so then you should be okay. Now, usually the first couple rounds... Usually you go home around maybe three weeks, but the more that the chemo hits your body, the longer it takes for your body to recover. They said my fifth round I'd probably be in for five weeks, but the shortest I've ever been in is three weeks. So each time it takes just a teeny bit longer. Let's see, I sleep a whole lot. Um, I have really good support system like my friends come and visit me a lot we play games we play cards um the arts and crafts lady 
would come and bring me crafts and I'll make little little heart things and they bring like masks that I can paint and they bring so much of different crafts I can do and um, the child life people will bring in movies for me to watch and, and um, also like every See, every Tuesday the balloon angels come, and that's always fun. They always talk to you and bring you balloons. And then on Wednesday, the police officers usually come, and they will come in and talk to you, and then they'll usually give you something, like they give me little handheld games. And last Wednesday, they gave me this little tiger. I'm not sure where it is, but it, it matches that big tiger I have up there. And so that was so nice of them. And sometimes they sometimes they'll bring you food. And then on I forget what day it is. One day Jared's joy cart comes by. Thursdays. Thursdays. That's always fun too. And that they don't have stuff just for little kids. They have stuff for like one time I bought a pillow, like a pillow making kit. You like make your own pillow. It took a couple hours. It was fun. And then um, last time I got this learn how to sew thing, which is pretty cool. And I get a bunch of those big fuzzy posters that you color. I think those are fun. And then um, every like every month, Texas Roadhouse brings food in, so we have a big dinner, which is nice because I get sick of the hospital food. And then um, people have into chemo parties, and you get cake and. And the nurses are always real nice. They're real fun. They'll come in and talk to you. And, like, they come in and watch TV with me. And that's always real fun. And it just seems like the more you're here, the more it becomes more like a second home. I am on 7 West, which is the seventh floor. And the staff here is just awesome. Um... The other day, one of the nurses, Leslie, she surprised me one night. She works night shifts, and she decorated my door, which you'll get to see later. And she had, she put this big poster that said wanted neutrophils and white blood cells, and she cut up all these plastic cups and put them all around. And she also got me this little angel for Valentine's Day, because I was here for Valentine's Day, and she knew I was kind of upset with boy issues. So she brought me a Valentine's Day present and all the nurses brought me candy for Valentine's Day. And then last night the nurses, Brittany and Abby, two of my other favorite ones, came up with this ANC rap song they're going to start trying and they made these little necklaces. This is the one I wore. And then they had like one of them wore this that said Lil Frosted Flake. And they had Easy Mac and Cheese, Special K, and Sir Fruit Loop. And they all came in my room and stood around, and one of them did the little beat, and they did this. It's time to draw your CBC, so come on, won't you sing with me? We need to get your ANC up, so come on, white blood cells, what's up? When you give your Neupogen shot, make sure that you pray a lot to make your neutrophil number high so we can tell you bye, bye, bye. So they did it in a real, like, rapping type of way, and they got these little chocolate candy bars, gold wrappers, and gave themselves grills. It was really funny. So from now on, every night, I'm going to pick five nurses, and I'm going to make them wear these and sing this to me. So I'm looking forward to that tonight to see who I'm going to pick. But yeah, so they're really, they really show how much they really care about all the patients on this floor. And they, they bond with me. Like I feel like I know them all really well. And I always look forward to weekends because the nurses work weekends. or look forward to certain nurses working certain days. And they make it a lot easier. The time goes by a lot faster. The doctors here are really great too. They're all a lot of fun. Um, the doctors usually, I think it's every two weeks, they'll switch out and one will be on this floor 
and they'll come by every day around 10 or 11, usually I'm still sleeping, but, and they will, you know, just tell how I'm doing and we can ask any questions, but the doctors on this floor mainly are Dr. Ohuja, Dr. Raj, Dr. Chirva, and Dr. Bertoloni. They're all four wonderful, wonderful doctors, and they're all a lot of fun. Dr. Chirva's the only woman of the four of them. She's kind of more quiet, but she's really nice. And Dr. Bertoloni, he's one of my favorites. He's, he's real fun. He'll come in and talk, and um, I was here for Halloween, and he came in dressed as a pirate and was talking about my, I didn't even know it was him, talking about how we're destroying my bone marrow, and he had this little pirate voice, and it was real fun. And then Dr. Ohuja would like to have fun with because he wears these, these big black glasses, so we call him GQ. And um, one time, I had a little friend in here, his name was Jordy. And Dr. Um, Dr. Ohuja went in there, and Jordy's like six. He was talking to Jordy, and all of a sudden, um, he took a balloon and smacked Jordy over the head. Of course, it didn't hurt him. He was just joking, so they were laughing and stuff. But Jordy never got to get him back. So whenever Dr. Ohuja came to see me the next day, I was like, Dr. Ohuja, come here. i got to ask you something. So I took this big yellow balloon, and I went bonk right on his head. He got a big kick out of that. And he, he's real fun. I always ask him a bunch of silly questions just to see what his answers are. Like one time I asked if it'd be okay since I'm in here so long if I could go on and get my nose job done here and just recover in the process. And he just looked at me and left and rolled his eyes. So yeah, he's, he's funny. He's the one I normally joke around with. And then there's Dr. Raj. Dr. Raj is more... He's more careful. Like sometimes, sometimes he wants your ANC to be a thousand before you go home instead of five hundred. Like he's more, like worrisome, but he's also a very good doctor himself. But all the doctors are wonderful, and I love them all. And it's about all about the doctors. When I was first diagnosed, it came as a bit of a shock. <laughs> I was always really healthy and I was a freshman at Bellarmine and I was living on the dorms in the dorms there on campus and one weekend I came home because I had these little red dots all over my legs and they kept itching and itching and itching and I went to the doctor and the doctor's like oh they're just hives and he gave me some medicine and some steroids to make them go away so we didn't think anything else of it and then the following weekend, I was trying to go to sleep on like, like a Sunday night, and my legs were killing me. Like I even looked up stuff on the internet to like how to like fix leg cramps, and I, I couldn't sleep, and I didn't have any medicine, and it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, and so I went home because I live only about 30 minutes away. I live in southern Indiana. And so I went home, and my mom even gave me like painkillers that we had from when I'd got my wisdom teeth pulled and they didn't help like I did not sleep the whole night I was crying and then so the next morning I looked at my legs had like bruises all over them so my dad thought they were blood clots so he was kind of freaking out saying we should go to the emergency room but we ended up going back to the doctor we went to the first time because we thought maybe the steroids had something to do with it well he said he had no idea what was going on and he, so he sent us to Floyd Memorial Hospital to get blood work done. So we got blood work done, and then that came out kind of fluky. So then we got more blood work done. It's like the next four days, we were in and out of the hospital getting blood work and blood work and blood work. And I'd also, like, had a cold then. I had been getting a bunch of colds. Like, I'd get a cold, and then I'd get over it. And then I'd get another cold, and I'd get over it. Like, it was just, like, never-ending sickness. So then, finally... Um, the blood work came out weird, so they sent me to an adult oncologist, and that was Dr. Chaudre in New Albany, Indiana, and he did a bone marrow, and then that was on a Friday, 
And then on a Monday morning around 9, he called, and he was like, you need to be here in an hour. So me and my mom got up and went there, and we went in his office. So we sat there, and he was just like, we got the preliminary test results back. And he's like, they're not good. He's like, you have leukemia. And that just hit us as such a shock because we thought it was some anti-immune dis um like disease, like something wrong with my like, immune system. Like we didn't think anything like that. And we, I just, it's like the day my world just went like boom, the official worst day of my life. Like I was so scared and I just remember sitting there in the office just crying. Like I had no idea what to expect and they told me I had to drop out of, or drop out of school for the semester. And so then we, went and called my dad, met up with my dad, and he came back, and my boyfriend at the time, and they came back with us, back to Dr. Chaudry's. And they explained all the, like, what was going to happen, and so and so and such. And the next day, I got the port put in, surgery. And the following day, I started chemotherapy. And it was just all kind of just hit me at once, and that's how it came to be. One day everything was normal, I was living a normal life, and then the next day someone tells me that, oh, I have a 60% chance of surviving this, and it just makes you realize, like, everything you've ever taken for granted, you know? Like, it's like you never think something like this is going to happen to you or to anyone that you love or know, but it does. I didn't start losing my hair till the end of the first round of chemo and with me I was always this you know a little materialistic girl I had loved my hair I actually had short brown hair but I dyed it real real blonde and I had extensions which made my hair real long so my hair was long and blonde and down to here and like I loved it and the hair part was probably one of the worst things that I ever had to go through losing it um, one day I was just laying there and I just went like this and like clumps just like start falling out and so we called this man from this salon called Blades and he came over and he shaved my head for me which was one of the hardest things I've ever done and so then they start giving me a bunch of these little turban things I probably have I don't know, 15 or 20 of them, because you'd be surprised how cold your head gets <laughs> when you're sleeping and stuff. And then um, the guy from Blades brought me a wig, but also whenever I got out of the hospital that time, we went wig hunting, and there's some stores down on 4th Street in Louisville that we went to, and I found this wig, and I really liked it. It was about the color of my hair just a little bit shorter so it kind of made me feel like you know I was like the same person still per se because I always loved my blonde hair and now I have probably I don't know probably 13 14 wigs I have one like this this one is synthetic hair and then I have one like this, but it's longer. It looks like my real hair, which is real hair, so I can actually straighten it and curl it. And then I have a few blonde ones, I mean a few brunette ones. And then I have um, one that everybody calls Dolly Parton because it's real, real blonde and curly. Then I have another blonde one, and it's curly and has, like, brown highlights going through it. I have a bunch of really pretty ones, but I have to say this is one of my favorites. And... But yeah, that was definitely the hardest thing, probably or one of the worst things about going through the chemotherapy, especially being a girl. And just, it's just so hard. It's like I lost one of the, like, like my hair. Like people couldn't pay me $2 million to cut off my hair. And it's like I had no choice. And that was probably the biggest downfall besides being sick to the leukemia. But it happens, and hair grows back. They said my hair will probably grow back 
curlier and darker, which my hair was already really dark, so I don't know how much darker it can get, but they said that hopefully in about a year and a half, I'll have hair long, about to here long enough where I can get more extensions put in and have my hair long again. But it's not too bad wearing the wigs. They actually have this thing at Blades where you can go and you they will fix up your own um, wig for you with real hair. And he told me that they usually sell them for a thousand, but to cancer patients, he'll sell them for five hundred. And they can actually glue them on your head and the glue lasts for like 20 days so you can go swimming and anything you want to not to worry about your wig falling off and it just makes it a lot more easier but you get used to wearing the wigs it's not that bad at all actually it actually saves a lot of time when you're trying to get ready <laughs> but yeah some advice that I could give to children or adults that have been just diagnosed with leukemia or any form of cancer is to just stay positive. I mean you can sit there and you can mourn and mourn and think why me, why me, but that's that's not gonna take it away. The doctors have even told me that the ones that do survive are the ones that know they're gonna survive and that have the positive outlook and just make the best of it. I mean, no one said life is always going to be fair. And you just have to, what I, my quote is, you have to play the hand you were dealt and just make it work. It's not fair, yeah, but there's so many people. It helps you realize there's so many people out there that care about you. And it they'll come and they'll visit you and you'll get so many cards and it just really makes you feel like you know you really mean something and also God too like there's many scriptures like it says you know God is our God is my strength and my salvation and just to know that he's with you the whole time and he has a plan for your life and this isn't fair, but many people go through similar situations like this. But it's the outlook you have on it that helps you really make it. This is my door that the night nurses, Leslie being one of them, decorated. And it has wanted white blood cells and neutrophils because that's what makes up your ANC. And that's how you get to go home when you get those. So they made my door. They have all this stuff on it. And then last night, Brittany and Abby wrote me a ANC song or rap that now all the nurses are going to rap to every night to make my ANC go higher. And they have these, look like kind of like neutrophils. And they have these as the white blood cells. And that's my door. This is the nurse's station of Seven West. And those are the secretaries. <laughs> and then this is the family room. This is where we celebrated Thanksgiving and my mom's birthday and there's computers in there with the internet and there is a TV watch TV and there's free slushies for anyone who wants them and there's also a microwave and an oven and a refrigerator to keep stuff in and they have sure and here they have a window that leads to the playroom. So if you're in the family room, you can watch your little kids play in the playroom. And there's all the dishes. All the moms usually help clean the dishes and stuff. And people put their name on things and put them in the fridge or the freezer. And those slushies, like I said, they're free to anyone who wants them. They have Kool-Aid and Lifesavers. 
my personal fave is the two mixed together. And then this is back out to the hallway. Down here is the playroom. This is for the little kids to play in. It's really nice. See, there's kids playing now. And they have games and stuff for the kids to play with. And they have books and stuff for the kids to read. They have a basketball hoop. And they have little toys and stuff for the kids to ride around in. And there's the window over there that leads to the family room so that the parents can watch their kids. And these are the wagons, kind of used as wheelchairs, but a lot of times they'll put the kids in the wagons, the little kids, and wheel them around so they don't have to ride in the wheelchairs. And this is where they have arts and crafts on Friday. And the kids sit around and do arts and crafts. And this is pretty new. It was done in the last few, three or four months. They have it all decorated all fishy. And this here is the teen room for teenagers. It's pretty nice. This is new too. But they have this little disco light right there and they have a couch, this big flat screen TV. And then they have games for the computer where you could fly a spaceship. And they have a bunch of board games in here too. That these are more teen games. Like they have Sorry, Sequins, Clue, Cranium, Tribond. And then these are a bunch of movies. They have a bunch of movies people have donated. A bunch of new ones too. They have like Runaway Jury, Bend It Like Beckham. A bunch of good movies. They have, I like this movie. Pay It Forward. It's a really good one. My Best Friend's Wedding. Just a bunch of movies that kids would like. And in here is where they keep books. They have some novels, some short stories. Sometimes they have chicken soup for the soul books in here. And just a bunch of different books that teenagers would like to read. Poems. So this is where the teens like to hang out. And they have a refrigerator in here too. And both of these computers do have internet access. So you can get on the internet and play or play computer games on them. Let's see. And then over this way is some of the offices. Back there is where they have the bone marrow transplants, which we won't go back there. Let's see. This is the ice machine where people get ice. Oh, there's another boy, too, that has his door decorated. He's a big Colts football fan. And he has AML also. Me and him are friends. Let's see, we'll go back around this way and show you the nutrition room. Which all my friends come, they like to go to the nutrition room. They have a bunch of good stuff in there. Right here. And all this is free. And they have, let's see, just a bunch of different stuff. And here they have any kind of juices you want, pudding, jello, all like milk, 2%, 1%, whole milk. And then here, they have popsicles. And then in here, they have like crackers and stuff. Almost looks like they're out of them today. 
And they have sweetener and sugar and creamer for your tea and coffee and coffee for the parents or the kids that like coffee. And we go back this way. And this takes us back to the nurse's station. With all the wonderful nurses. And out there, they have the um, OMO. That's where people go in to get like blood transfusions or like it's like outpatient. But you have to, these doors stay locked. So if you want to come in, you have to buzz and everything, wash your hands. And they let you in. And this is 7 West. 